Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Carlton People. Today, we're going to meet Carlos. Well, Carlos, you and I have met, but everyone's going to meet you today. Uh, welcome to your episode of Carlton People. Thank you very much. Very excited to be here. Um, I've loved seeing everyone's story. Um, it really is sort of, it's nice to see how people um, have embraced the journey and um, see sort of like how they've been brought up alongside the Carlton Football Club and yeah, you know, Carlton is family for a lot of us. Um, yeah, and for me, it's no different. Yeah. Well, how did it start for you? How did you become a supporter? Uh, well, it was kind of like, I'm adopted, Terry, so I come from Guatemala, um, and I was three when I was um, – my parents adopted me, and before I'd even had a, a chance to even smile, my dad had given me a jumper, um, and that was before – I even left Guatemala City. Um, so the photo went up to the family and um, I was officially a Carlton supporter. I didn't really have much of a say and um, turned out it was a great decision. Um, but it was maybe one I didn't really think would turn out to be positive halfway through the middle of the 2000s. And um, But, yeah, very happy with my dad's sort of like his way or the highway sort of approach um, when it comes to football. Yeah. yeah. What's your earliest memory of watching or going? Oh, uh, I mean, I, I wasn't really, I, I didn't really go to a lot of games when I was younger, uh, mainly because I was a bit of a serial pest. Um, you know, I would be climbing on chairs and climbing under them. I was scavenging for chips that had dropped on the ground. Like, so my dad didn't really <laughs> take me to the games because he wanted to focus on the actual game, not on me. Um, so I think really during the early maybe mid 2000s I sort of started going and started focusing a lot more and um and we weren't fantastic then um but I was a really big supporter of individual players and um and I sort of you know had pictures of like people like Bryce Gibbs and yeah you know, I mean Juddy up in the wall behind me as well um oh wow you know, smart idols and um even the fev you know just so fun so fun um but yeah even just you know i was, I was thinking back this morning it's like oh, you know what are the games that really meant something to me and probably the one that stuck out the most was the calton s then one where we came back from i think 48 points down you know, i think half time and then feb just went crazy kicked eight and a half and it was just unreal and i was that was sort of like the first core memory that I ever experienced with the Carlton Football Club and um, something that stuck with me forever. And um, and then sort of like as we got towards the first sort of batch of finals, like that 2009 to 2013 period, uh, it was more just, um, you know, the wins over like Port to get into the finals in 2013. Or um, I really enjoyed the two finals um, that we lost, um, unfortunately. But... Um, even just knowing that we were good enough to be there, um, it was cool um, because, you know, growing up and you don't see a lot of success and you're going to school and all your other friends are um, really happy and excited and you've got the Collingwood supporters and the Geelong supporters really up and about and you just want to be there. And um, when we finally got that first taste of it, it was really awesome. Um, and, yeah, I was actually sick for that first, um elimination final against Essendon um I had tickets I was about to about to leave and I just was really unwell so I missed it um but it was I watched it on the TV it was just um an unreal sort of experience and I just wish I had been there um but I made up for it for the uh, Richmond one uh where that was a lot of fun seeing Jeffy Garlett run into an open goal um I can still hear Close Bruce McAvaney's yeah I'm cool in the back of my head and um yeah, that was unbelievable. So, yeah, sort of a, a long history of memories, um, good and bad, but, you know, that's why we watch football and why we support this great club. Yeah. Going back to, you know, your early memories where, you know, you're talking about that 207, 208 era, you know, Judd Murphy, Gibbs, Cruiser, yeah. these types. I remember really clearly that that's definitely where my memory kicks in. I remember most games... Um, not off the top of my head, but I, I do really remember that whole era. And I remember when they first made finals and it was 
it was kind of like, oh, we've done the hard yards, you know, we've had the salary cap punishments. We've, um, you know, now we've drafted these kids. They're in their fourth, fifth, sixth years and, you know, mm. Murphy, Gibbs and the like. And then I just thought it would, I just thought it would happen because it made sense. And it's funny. I remember back, back then thinking, oh, we're so, we have, we're in such a drought, like a finals drought. <laughs> Little yeah. did we know what was to come. But how did you, how did you reconcile what had happened with that group and how it just, it didn't happen and, and never were able to go past, you know, the first round, the second round? Uh, you know what? I, I think about this a lot and I think we all focus on the top end that we had at that sort of period. Yeah. Um, but I think in reality, I just don't think we batted deep enough. Um, yeah. And when there was a significant injury, we didn't have a good enough replacement coming in. And I think that really did hurt us in like those big games that really, um, I guess, determined where we finished and who we played. And um, and you look at the great teams like Collingwood and Geelong, you know, one person goes down and then you've got like a, a really good player come in. And then, you know, unfortunately, we just didn't have that. Um, and I think as we sort of transitioned from like Ratten into sort of Malthouse, it kind of just went down the drain a little bit further. And we started having like Zach Tui leave and, you know, who's replacing Zach Tui? Um, and then, you know, Jared Wade and all these really good players. And, um, yeah, you know, I just don't think we had enough players. Um, and I don't think, you know, you, you listen to interviews about, you know, even like some of the younger players coming in, like a 2015 sort of draft and they were sort of saying they didn't they were too scared to sort of try and do too much training because they didn't want to be seen as a try hard like that's just not a that's just not good it's not good culture and i think yeah. perhaps maybe that could have been an issue at the same time and um but I, look, at the same time like no one really knows i just think we didn't have enough players and yeah could have been a systemic issue. Could have been a few other things, but um, yeah, like those top end players, man. Just oh, it could have been, man. It could have been. I I remember them making finals, and I think now that we've seen it again for the first time since then, um, the key difference was that back then, you know, that twenty two oh nine to two thousand thirteen period where we played finals. Even though we made the finals and played in mm. finals and came close to, you know, pushing, I never felt that we were going to win the flag or capable of winning the flag. Whereas now, um, it's weird. The first time this group makes finals, I feel like we're good enough to win the whole thing. Do you yeah. think that is because the competition's different and, you know, you had the great Geelong back then or the great Collingwood back then and mm. maybe the comps a little bit more even? Or do you think the actual team is a lot better than what it was back then? Uh, I think it is a combination of those two things. We are a much more consistent team around, the, like on the park. Mm. Um, you know, you look at players like Jordan Boyd, you know, I rate him a lot. Um, and, and he's someone that I'd be very happy with coming into the side if, say, you know, well, we saw it this year with Williams not being able to play and, you know, he's a suitable replacement. Um, but I also think, you know, it, it comes to a point like free agency and it's easier to require players and it's a lot more of an even competition. You know, I think we're a good team, um, but there's also a lot of middle of the road teams. So I think we stick out a lot more and I feel, um, yeah, I, I just think we're in a lot better position this time around than the last time around. Um, and like you said, like I genuinely feel like we can win a flag. Yeah. Um, if not next year, um, I still think we've got the a list that's young enough to compete for the next two or three years. Um, you even see what's happening with Brisbane. They're young enough and they're consistently competing. Um, and, yeah, I, I like the mantra, like, why not us? Um, you know, we've picked up players like Orazio. You know, who would have thought? Like, so cheap, doesn't cost us a thing, no risk. But if he comes in, does his job, um, and you know keeps say potentially a Matty Owies out of the team, then that's only just going to do us you know do really well for us mm. um, because he's a when he's on he's he's very very good. Yeah. Um, so yeah, you know I think the sign of a good team is that when you can pick up these um, good players for nothing. Um, yeah, I think that's where we're at. 
when was the moment with the current team 2023 we're obviously filming this but when was the moment that you believed uh that they had actually turned the corner was there a moment was there a game or was it just like you know reflecting on the whole season now uh i i was of the strong belief throughout the whole season that we were really we were a side that was good enough to play finals um obviously there was such a big disconnect through that middle part of the year and it was really <laughs> agonizing just see it just collapse it was just it was just dreadful um and then i i actually flew up to the sydney game and i watched that and um on sort of like replay like we should have won that i mean we should have won a lot of those games and it was just our conversion was just horrible um and so you think about you know the essendon game we start the game one five you know you you start well there, you know, it could be a different story. Sydney game kicked dreadfully. Um, you know, we weren't good enough for Collingwood earlier in the year, but um, I admit, funny enough, I I saw the Gold Coast game, went to America for four weeks, missed all the fun, you know, missed, you know, missed the Hawthorne wow. game. Um, wow. And I was just like, you know, maybe you should just stay overseas. Like it, maybe I'm just like the, um, like that bad spirit. Um, I'm the so, problem. <laughs> yeah. So I came back and it was nice to have like that uh, moment. It's like, oh, it's not me. It's good. Um, you know, it was watching the West Coast game. I loved, actually, can I just say, I loved how everyone thought we were going to lose to West Coast. I loved it um, because I was just like, you know, this team, um, well, even we haven't seen like a team like the team we've got now back it up. Mm -hmm. Yep. And it's usually those games against West Coast um, or North Melbourne that we decide to sort of like take the foot off the gas a bit. Uh, but I loved that start because um, I just thought that's a sign of a really good team. Um, you know, just getting the job done early, taking foot off the rest of the game. Um, you can rest players. Um, but, yeah, I think like most people, that's that first game where we thought, oh, this is it, was that Port Adelaide game. Um you know, and I watch your, you know, I watch your reviews and I watch, you know, I watch Bucky as well. And, you know, I just, I think we all came to the agreement. It's like, yeah, that was, that was really solid. That was exactly what we wanted to see. And, um, and, you know, poor fans can argue like they had players out, but it was, we dismantled them like line by line and Absolutely. they weren't good enough. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that was really the turning point there. I sort of like, oh, okay. They were on. Um, and then beat West Coast five in a row. That was a landmark because we hadn't done that for a long time. And then rocked up Friday night against Collingwood, and I was pretty feral, sitting in um, level four <laughs> with Collingwood supporters around me. And uh, that was a lot of fun because I hadn't seen a, a win against Collingwood since uh, was it 2017? I think it was the last time we were yeah, allowed. To I think the last time we were there was, watching uh, it. Yeah, yeah, the COVID game um but yeah and then um i actually thought we would lose against st kilda um because i just thought um it'd be nice to have a loss potentially in that period sort of just re-energize the group and sort of refocus us but um it was also i'll take the win any day of the week as well um and yeah you know just love those memories of patty dow kicking that goal and um and then you know look at Tommy DeConing the way he finished off the year and um you know I didn't mind the GWS loss you know anyone would sort of say that's acceptable um especially when you've locked in a, a finals place like you, like we had in fifth and um which felt nice because I've never been happy with the loss to be honest but that was a nice one to get and yeah and then the rest is history Tez the Sydney yeah. game Melbourne game unreal what are you I ask a lot of people this. What, what is it about the club that you think makes us so passionate about it? Uh, look, I, I think most teams have this, but I think it's really just an, I think it's it's the people. I think because the, the club has such a long history where one of the foundation clubs, um, you know, you can just walk up Ligon Street and you just see what it means to people um i was 
um, you know, see with Richmond Punt Road and Collingwood, but you know, it's a shit area anyway. Um, I I think with the Carlton Football Club, though, I just think because I think recently it's amplified because we've all just gone through this consistent period of just dreading, you know, a dreadful like performance. Uh, now we sort of like we've been through that heartache. We've come through the other side, and now um, the players are playing like they are wanting to play for us, the supporters, mm-hmm. um, and they're playing for the monogram. Um, and I think we had a few players um, that sort of came over for their own self-interest. Um, and I wasn't a big fan of Daisy, um, and I wasn't a big fan of a couple other players, but um, it's good to have a core batch of players that want to play for us and – I think that was what some of our supporters weren't too happy about midway through the year because I just thought there was a lot of disconnect. There wasn't a lot of people diving or desperation, you know, desperating acts. Um, yeah, I just think it means so much to us because we've you know, been around for about so over 150 years. But 2014 was 150 years, wasn't it? Um, you know, 16 premierships. <laughs> It's just so much. I, I missed. I missed all the '80s, obviously, and you know, what a time to be alive. That would have been great. But um, I think it's the first time for us, younger generation, to experience potentially what the people in the '80s and uh, mid '90s sort of felt like. This is a good team. They just, yeah, yeah. I think there's something also to be said, which I'm grateful for. Like, obviously, I haven't enjoyed a lot of watching them. Um, because it's been painful to watch for the most part. But there's, there was always that notion of oh, if and when it turns, when it clicks, it's going to be worth mm. it because you watch the growth from the beginning. And so, you know, hopefully it eventuates with a couple of premierships. And then we have the life memories of, you know, a couple of yeah. decades of pain followed by a decade yeah. of actual success with the one group. Yeah, you're right. And... I laugh because I just think about like if we had a one this year, it just would have been a movie. It, it just yeah. it's one of those classic movie line, like storylines is like, you know, you'd look like Moneyball. <laughs> it's trashed throughout the season, and then you somehow it clicks and then um, you know, you win the premiership and it goes off. But um yeah, man, yeah, this club this club though. <laughs> they it, it it I feel like when you sign up to be a Carlton supporter, you are putting your emotions on the line as well because you go through it. <laughs> you do go through it. Um, yeah. And, you know, I, I, I looked, I was trying to recall some really dark Carlton memories. Um, where what is your darkest like, memory? Oh, well, this one really stuck out to me because I've never, ever left a game early bar one game. And it was when we played Freo at Marvel. We didn't score a single goal for the first half of the quarter, but it wasn't like that out playing us. It was just like we rocked up and just didn't care. Yeah. Um, And it was just the most, I I, I felt sick like watching it. And dad and I, we just looked at each other. It's like, what is going on? Like, what is this? Like, we've got 22 players out there that just, look at people running past them and they're just saying, okay, here's the ball. You just run off and kick a goal. And yeah, that was a filthy day. Um, or even just like <laughs> this constant sacking of coaches and then having to rock up to, to work or school the next day. And just like, like, I just wish this club has stability just yeah. for a day. That'd be great. Thanks. Um, and I'm just, I even, Another one is like my dad said when I was younger, I used to constantly ask him like, "When will we kick a goal?" Because um, the team it's would be like that. five, and then you just like be sitting here. It's like, oh, we didn't kick one this quarter, but hopefully we kick one this quarter." Yeah. Um, but you know, it's a lot better now, and I'm hoping it is a lot better now. I'm yeah. hoping it sticks like that for a, a long yeah. time. Yeah. Yeah, we've gone from. I mean, I still remember, you know. 2018 so clearly and like knowing and accepting that we had gone through this culling of the list we weren't going to win many games and I remember thinking I hope we can just put up a good showing for a half or you know for a quarter against the top four side and so 
Yeah. I'm so relieved that we're past that now. I'm so relieved that there yeah. is expectation and pressure on them because that, that means that you're good enough. Or well, that means that the, the consensus yeah. is that you're good enough. Yeah, true. Um, and I think that 2018 season, like most people, was just when I was the most disconnected from the club. Yeah. Um, you know, sometimes I, I prioritise just staying home and watching on TV because I just knew what was going to happen. Whereas now I'm just like, okay, well, this team this team wants to play for us, so I'll rock up and be as loud as I can. Um, yeah, and I just want us to have sustained success. And, you know, whether what that looks like is really up to the players and, um, you know, but I've had a taste of finals and prelims and I think I know where I prefer to be. And, um, yeah, that was an unreal day, that prelim. Yeah. Yeah, Talk lucky. to me about it. Yeah, what do you what do you recollect about the the finals run in 2013? 20, uh, 2023, I should say. Well, <laughs> well, that 2013 was different, but uh, was, 2023 yeah. was. Um, I think that Sydney game. I was really, I was probably the most nervous um, because I felt like out of all the teams we could have played against, Sydney was kind of the one I didn't want to play, uh, okay. just because they're. They're a team that's always sort of been there. They've um, they're really tough. They always show up, and um, if there was ever going to be a team that um, reigns in our parade a little bit, it would be them. Um, but you know, just so happy the way we started, and Doherty kicking that first goal, and everyone going off their heads, and then Charlie running into goal the next minute. Um, that was kind of set us up as well, and you know, and then you. Um, that Melbourne game, I kind of felt like we were really evenly matched. Um, and, you know, I think we saw historically over the last couple of years that we have been um, really close. And, um, you know, March, May 2022, I was like, round 22, um, we got that, you know, finger or ankle, whatever he says. Um, I'm still not sure he even touched it, but, you know, we'll take it. Um, and then... Acres kicking that goal on, my gosh, that was good. Um, and then that Brisbane game, I was lucky enough to get a ticket and fly up. Uh -huh. fly up yeah. yeah. Well, I didn't fly into directly Brisbane. I flew up into Gold Coast and then drove an hour and a bit because the traffic was so bad and then caught a bus in after we drove to Brisbane and couldn't find our car on the way back. And um, But, yeah, it was just a special day. You know, even though we didn't win, I think the experience, you know, being five goals up in a prelim, you know, try telling me that halfway through the year, um, you know, it could have been anything. But at the same time, but, um, I also felt like were we really good enough to beat Collingwood that next week? Um, I, I think I'd like to say so, but I think Collingwood were just so clearly the best um, that year and, um yeah i think as you said i think a couple of weeks ago you said we don't have that thing to hang on collingwood anymore like we yeah. all want 16 now so yeah, um, that's right. you know it's up to us to you know to get back ahead and you know put us where we belong which is the best team in the competition and um yeah but that final series was just something else yeah. so i felt like even other teams are just hopping on a hopping on our bandwagon at the same time and um yeah, shame, but, you know, we got there and I want to try it again and hopefully granny next year. What's missing? What's next? What's, what's, what is, what is the missing piece to help the team go to the next level next year? Uh, look, I actually think we've done pretty well. Um, I think the problem areas were probably that small forward. Um, and I think if Orazio gets himself right, um, then I think he can be a very valuable asset. Um, I think we all know how talented Motlop is, um, but reality is he's still, you know, he's going to be a third year player next year. Um, and then, yeah, I think we we did well to sort of rectify that a little bit. Um, you don't, I don't really know much about Elijah Hollands. Um, yeah, but I think we're very, very strong in the back half. Midfield, potentially, I'd like a bit more explosiveness. I think we're all sort of a little bit one-paced a bit. Um, and I think that's why I like Dow, because I think he just added a bit of point of difference. Um, 
but yeah, I think, I think it's just the forward line. You know, you get Harry kicking straight. You know, we, you know, he adds forty goals a year, and you know, Motlop does it does twenty a year. Then you know, that's as dangerous as Brisbane, as far as I'm concerned. And yeah, yeah. we're definitely talented enough. Absolutely. Yeah. All right. Uh, last question: Which yeah. year will they lift up the cup? No, oh, Tez, I'm an optimist. I think, I think next year. I, I just, you know, I, I hang all my uh, my beliefs on, you know, our captain. I think our captain is really determined, and I think our players will follow him. And you know, I think it will be next year. And you know, our friend Kane Corns is. A, Said the exact same thing, so must be he must has. be real. <laughs> must be real. Um, real now. You know things have changed when he's tipping you for the flag. Yeah, I know. I was just I was sitting there. It's like, okay, Kane. All right. All right. I'll, I'll take this version of Kane any day. Thank you. Um, but I just hope he hasn't mozzed us. I, re- I really hope he hasn't mozzed us because um, he's been off us and now he's finally on us. So, uh, yeah, no, exciting times to come. All right. Well, mate, thanks so much for your time and. It's been a pleasure to document this with you and look forward to bumping into you again uh, next season and beyond. Definitely. Thank you so much, Tez. And I've loved all the content and I'm um, looking forward to uh, seeing what's coming. You know it. Go Blues. Oh, yeah. Go Blues.